Flat earthers love to say, just use your eyes or your senses, as if everything around us obviously proves that the earth is flat. But what if we do exactly that and actually open our eyes? Let's look around, but properly. Because if the earth really was flat, then the world would not look how it does. Welcome as I bring you five things that simply would not work on a flat earth. Hello all and welcome along to another video and day 29 of One A Day For May where I release a video every single day for the month of May. My name is Simon Dan, thanks very much for joining me. Before we begin with today's video though, a quick thank you to the sponsors, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or you're managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time. All in one place, all on your terms. Now you can start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up, tailored to your brand or business, and optimized for every device. If you take payments for anything, you can make checkout seamless for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools, accept credit cards, PayPal, and Apple Pay, and eligible countries offer customers the option to buy now and pay later with Afterpay and Clearpay. Squarespace also has the tools you need to create and sell your own online course. You start with a layout that fits your brand, upload videos and customize everything with next generation editing technology. Create engaging lessons your audience will love, then add a paywall and set your price. You can charge a one-time fee or sell subscriptions. Take what you know and turn it into income with Squarespace courses. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Simandan for 10% off your first purchase of any website or domain. Right, on with today's video, which as I said in the intro, is all about things that wouldn't work if the earth was flat. And by the way, this list doesn't comprise of opinions or conspiracies or pixelated screenshots from weather balloons. These are basic observable facts from the world we live in. And once you look at them clearly, the flat earth starts falling apart fast. Let's start with one of the most basic things that we experience every day, sunsets. In the flat earth model that is so often explained by David Weiss, for example, the sun moves in a circular path over the earth like a spotlight. It's not 93 million miles away for them, it's just a few thousand. And it lights up just a small part of the disk of earth and then moves on. But here's the problem, that kind of sun would never set. It would just get smaller and dimmer as it moved further away from you into the distance. And yet, we all know what a sunset looks like. The sun drops below the horizon. It doesn't fade out or shrink. It disappears cleanly behind the curve. You can literally watch it happen, especially if you've got a decent camera and a solar filter. And what is the flat earth fix for this problem? A bunch of vague hand waving about perspective or atmospheric lensing or some magic vanishing point that affects the sun but nothing else. But that's not how light works. That's not how perspective works either. If the sun just moved away from us on a flat surface, we'd still see it. It would just be smaller and lower in the sky. There wouldn't be total darkness. Sunsets only make sense if something big like a planet gets in the way. Right, moving on then to point number two, let's hop on a plane and head to the Southern Hemisphere. Where as we see with the Gleason's map video here, the flat earth model completely collapses. Take for example, Sydney, Australia to Santiago, Chile. On a globe, that is a fairly direct line across the South Pacific. It takes around 12 to 13 hours. But if you try to plot that same route on a flat earth map, say the Gleason's map, you're in trouble. The two cities are practically on opposite sides of the disk. It makes no sense. So here's the question, why do these flights exist? And why do they take the exact amount of time we expect when we talk about globe distances? Flat earthers either pretend those flights are fake, despite live tracking and ticket sales and videos from passengers, or they claim the earth is flat but they're not using the maps they always show. It's pure chaos. And watch them cling to emergency landings for some weird reason. Now, let's multiply that problem Johannesburg to Perth, Buenos Aires to Auckland. These flights only make sense if the Earth is a globe. They're completely broken on any flat Earth map. If the Earth were flat, 
every airline in the southern hemisphere would have to be lying. Every GPS for every flight would have to be rigged. And every pilot would have to be in on the scam. You probably do believe all that as well, but how likely is it? To be honest, come on. Now next up is point number three, and it's a favour of the flat earthers, relative density. This is their go-to replacement for gravity. They say things fall not because of gravity, but because things are denser than the medium they're in. So a rock sinks in water, a balloon floats in air, etc. But here's the problem. Relative density explains why things sink or float in a fluid. The atmosphere is a fluid, remember? But it doesn't explain direction. It doesn't explain why everything falls down. On a globe, gravity pulls everything into the direction of the Earth's core, the centre of its mass. No matter where you are, London, Lima, Cape Town, everything towards the Earth's core. On a flat Earth, there is of course no core. So what defines down? What is pulling an object? Why does a dropped pen fall straight down in New York and Argentina, even though these places are on opposite sides of the flat earth disk. And why does that pen fall with the same rate, the same force as everywhere else? At different altitudes, the density of air is different. So something will fall at a different rate on top of a mountain, say, than it would at sea level. And of course, we don't observe that. Relative density doesn't offer up any sort of force. It's just a description of what happens after something's already falling. Without gravity, you don't get orbits, you don't get tides, you don't get consistent motion. And the flat earth has got no working replacement. Just a vague shrug and the word buoyancy. That's not physics, that's just a guess. Right, moving on to number four then, point four, and we're gonna look at the stars. This is one of the biggest red flags in the flat earth model. If the Earth were flat and the stars were rotating above us in the dome, then everyone on Earth should be able to roughly see all the same stars at some point in the night. Just from different angles, of course. No exceptions. But that's not what we see. In the Northern Hemisphere, the stars rotate anti-clockwise around Polaris. In the Southern Hemisphere, they rotate clockwise and Polaris isn't even visible. You can't see the Southern Cross from England, you can't see Polaris from Argentina. That only makes sense if you're on opposite sides of a globe facing away from each other. At the equator, you can literally watch stars in the north and south moving in different directions at the same time. That's only possible on a sphere. Flat Earth, of course, can't explain this. And most Flat Earth maps don't even attempt to place stars correctly because they can't. The sky gives the globe away every single night. Last one then, and point number five is seasons. This is something we of course all experience, but rarely think about. On the globe model, the Earth is tilted 23.5 degrees on its axis. That means different parts of the planet get more or less sunlight throughout the year. In June, the Northern Hemisphere where I am is tilted towards the sun. And that means it's summer, of course. In December, the Southern Hemisphere gets the tilt and it's their summer. That explains why the seasons are opposite. But in a flat Earth model, the sun moves in a tighter circle during the Northern Hemisphere summer and a wider circle during the Northern Hemisphere winter. Sounds clever until you realize it doesn't match what we observe. Because in order for the day length to be the same everywhere, 24 hours, when the sun is on that wider circle, it would need to move faster wouldn't it? We don't observe that. In fact, we see the sun moving at the same rate all the time because it's us moving, not the sun. On top of that, the flat earth model doesn't explain why day length changes gradually or why temperatures don't correlate cleanly to the sun's path on the map. It just doesn't work. The tilted globe, it explains everything. Shadows, solstices, equinoxes, and the midnight sun. So there we have it. If the earth was flat, the sun wouldn't set, flights would be chaos, down wouldn't mean anything, the stars would behave completely differently, and the seasons would be a mess. But none of that happens. What we actually see, the light, the motion, the sky, is only possible on a spherical Earth. Flat Earth isn't just wrong, it's unworkable. It collapses under the weight of basic observation. Well, there we go. Another video all done and dusted. If you enjoyed this breakdown and want to see more like it, then please do let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite point of those five. And I'm gonna wrap up another video. Thanks so much for watching. It truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Hitting the thumbs up button too would be very much appreciated. And sharing the video too would be great. Thank you. Just enough time to once again thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Remember, uh, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Simandan for 10% off your first purchase of any website or domain. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for the penultimate day of One A Day for May. And it could only be on Friday, Mr. CC 
Chris from New York, Westchester County. We're going back to him. See you then.